cannot stop the birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from nesting in your hair. That's right. <laughs> and again with me here today is Dr. Bell. Amber, uh, welcome back. Thank you for having me again. Yes, uh, well I'm reminded of what uh, Lord Palmerston of England said when he was approached by the Scottish clergy. Uh, they wanted to appoint a day of fasting and prayer for the cholera. Mm. And uh, they came to him, and uh, he replied, in effect, cleanse and disinfect your streets and houses, promote cleanliness and health mm. among the poor, and see that they are plentifully supplied with good food and raiment, and employ right sanitary measures generally, and you will have no occasion to fast and pray. Mm. He went on to say that, nor will the Lord mm. hear your prayers while these, his preventatives, remain unheeded. First of all, though, Amber, how is the flu spread? That's a great question. You definitely want to think about where am I going to be coming in contact with this virus? How is it going to be passed from person to person? Um, it's primarily spread through airborne droplets that can reach your eyes or your nose or your mouth. For instance, if someone sneezes or coughs, the droplets, that, the moisture that comes out of the lungs and the nose can be uh, spread through the air and picked up by your body. Um, uh -huh. Also, you can spread it by touching contaminated surfaces oh. and then touching your face, introducing the virus to your face. Oh, who does that? Everybody touches oh. their face. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe this is spread by nervousness. I touch something, then I touch my face, and yes. uh, I guess maybe this is a nervous disease. It's very true. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, uh, it's true that the more viruses you're exposed to, the, the higher your risk for contracting the flu because you have more and more of that virus in your body. Uh, the Surgeon General of the United States back in 1918 was Rupert Blue. And uh, Rupert Blue uh, gave a number of suggestions. I'll just read them off. He First he said, avoid needless crowding. Mm -hmm. Lots of people. Lots of people, and in 1918 that was very important because not only was the war effort underway and mm -hmm. there was crowding in the army camps, mm -hmm. but people had all moved to the cities in order that they could be involved in industry. Yes. And so there was just numerous families in one household. And so, uh, and we've learned that uh, you need to be at least six feet apart in order to uh, avoid the droplet. The droplets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess we know. better move apart here a little bit. <laughs> <I'll measure tape>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another thing he said was smother your coughs or your sneezes. Mm -hmm. Today we say do it in your coat sleeve or something like that. It doesn't work just to put your hand over your face because then your cough goes out between your hand and your mouth all over the place and uh, you just spread it to the people beside you instead of the ones in front of you. <laughs> and then you shake someone's hand, you know. <laughs> yes, that's right. It gets right. even worse. <laughs> uh, the next thing he said was remember the three C's. Clean mouth, clean skin, and clean clothes. Mm. Uh, basic cleanliness and uh, of course that's a good uh, thing to remember mm. anytime. Anywhere. Yeah. Uh, Cleanliness is next to godliness, isn't it? That's right. He said, food will win the war. Help mm. by choosing and chewing your food well. Wash your hands. Wash your hands before eating. Wash your hands after you've touched things. Don't let waste products of digestion accumulate, he said. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard anybody saying that recently. <laughs> no. But you can imagine if you have uh, your colon full of foods that are putting off toxins from overgrowth of bacteria, your immune system is going to go down. Definitely compromised. <laughs> so he said avoid tight clothing, tight shoes, tight gloves. Seek to make nature your ally, not your prisoner. So then he said when the air is pure, breathe all of it you can. Breathe deeply. Hmm. And that was his advice. And uh, I think that goes a long ways. Definitely. And we get that from the book uh, by John Barry, The Great Influenza. It's a good book to study on the 1918 flu. Good book to study if you're thinking about what the new flu coming through might be like. Definitely. They always say reviewing history is beneficial. I heard you talk a lot about being careful with coughing, you know, avoiding that droplet transmission. What about uh, other methods to protect, like healthcare providers? Often you see them wearing a mask around. It is suggested for healthcare workers that they use an N95 respirator. When the patient is sick, we like to put on a surgical mask on them. 
Very good. The surgical mask doesn't really protect them from uh, flu particles, but it cuts down the distance that they can <laughs> cough or sneeze out the particles. So you're preventing the spread for the healthcare workers and the other patients in the area. That's right. Very good. What is quarantine anyway? Well, quarantine is where they either uh, optionally or forcibly place someone apart from other people in society to protect either that person or society. But if say 30% of the population comes down with the flu, that's not going to be very effective. No, I guess we'd have to put everybody to bed, wouldn't we? I think so. Yeah, close <laughs> down the shop, martial law. Yeah, once, uh, once a pandemic begins, quarantine isn't likely to be effective. We start talking about social distancing. Social distancing is where you put space between people. You know, everybody carries a 10-foot pole and <laughs> right. you don't get within 10 <laughs> feet of people. Well, actually, or six feet. Or they poke you. Yeah, or they poke you. <laughs> Mm. If we can keep six feet between people, the number of people contracting a pandemic disease goes down dramatically. Okay. So uh, you just kind of wander around the neighborhood saying, okay, <laughs> stay away from me. You know, unclean, just keep unclean. Unclean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the big thing we have for prevention in our medical armamentarian is vaccine. Mm -hmm. What do you know about vaccines? Once a pandemic starts, it can take anywhere from four to six months before they develop the vaccine by the time they find the particular virus, do the testing oh. on it, develop the product, and then finally produce the vaccines. Oh, yeah. And by then, you know, you've had it and it's gone. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> In other countries, they've been trying the vaccine. How's it been working over there? Well, you know, there's a lot of countries trying to vaccinate against the regular flu. Mm -hmm. Canada's our near neighbor here. They had a 15-year period ending in 2005 where they tried what they call the universal influenza immunization uh, campaign. They wanted to get everybody immunized, mm -hmm. see if they could, you know, cure the common cold or the flu. And in 15 years, they did not significantly reduce the incidence of the influenza. Well, what about antivirals? Don't they have antivirals out there to, uh, to protect us against the yes. viruses? You know, antivirals are the next line of defense once people get the flu, and some of them have been used as a way of preventing the flu. Mm -hmm. uh, the main one that you've heard on the news a lot is Tamiflu. Tamiflu. I remember when Tamiflu first came out and the drug reps would come around and talk to us physicians about it. It will reduce the duration of the flu from five days to four days and it'll make the symptoms not as bad. Mm. In China reports are coming out that they gave the drug at the right time in the first day of symptoms. Mm -hmm. They gave plenty of it and the people still died. I guess what we really need to think about is prevention. Definitely. It sounds like the antivirals and the uh, vaccinations have been an attempt by their medical field, but there might be uh, other options out there for us. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, when you think about the flu coming around every year, you know everybody doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. um, well, we're talking about a 30% attack rate. Well, what about the other 60-70% that uh, don't get it? Mm. Why didn't they get it? How am I going to make sure that I'm among those people that don't get attacked by the flu? It's a great question. You definitely want to avoid it. Um, eight natural remedies. Have you eight heard of them? Eight natural remedies? The eight natural doctors. Let's talk about those real quick. Oh, well, <laughs> tell me about these. All right. Well, first of all, you've got pure, fresh air. Oh. Excellent. Getting lots of oxygen, lots of nutrients into your lungs and your body. Uh -huh. You've got sunlight, which oh. is wonderful for vitamin D, among many other things. Uh -huh. uh, rest, plenty of rest. They recommend getting at least seven to eight hours at night. Nice, uh -huh. uh, keeping your body rejuvenated. Oh. Proper diet, oh. very important. You want to feed a healthy body. You, okay. you are what you eat. Oh. Plenty of exercise. Everyone's heard about exercise. They promote it all over the place, but it's it can't be promoted enough. It's wow. very, very good to keep your circulation up, keep all your system running properly. Uh -huh. Use of water. Keeping yourself hydrated. Very uh -huh. important. Temperance. Oh. Also a very uh, important uh, component, making sure you do everything in moderation. Uh -huh. And then trust in divine power. Also, oh. many studies show that uh, people with a strong faith do well. So wow. these are our true remedies. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about how the flu attacks us so that we kind of have an idea Definitely. how we can avoid getting a flu by stimulating the part of the immune system that's going to be most important. The first line of defense. First of all is when the virus attacks the body, it attacks, say, a lung cell. It goes in the cell and it starts to take over the cell machinery to make more viruses. Mm -hmm. 
When it does that, it starts putting off viruses out of that cell to go infect other cells. And so the number of viruses in the lungs rises exponentially, mm. really fast. And so the first thing your body does to, in order to bring down the number of viruses is it gets the natural killer cells working mm -hmm. and it starts interferon working. These two things are the first line of defense, natural killer cells and interferons. So what we need to do is stimulate the natural killer cells. Make them so they're more of them and so they're more active. Mm -hmm. We want to avoid the things that will depress the natural killer cells. That's right. And then we want to do things that will increase interferon. After your first line of defense, the second line of defense is your lymphocytes, especially the B cells. B cells produce antibodies. The important antibody here is called IgA, mm -hmm. immunoglobulin A. Well, this is one that we'll look at also to see how the eight natural remedies affect that part of the immune system. Sounds good. Let's look at pure air first. Should we go outside to be doing this? Well, <laughs> if the weather was conducive, but pure air is definitely much better for you. Negative ions found in fresh air can actually activate natural killer cells and reduce oh. the number of disease-causing microbes in the air. Wow, well that's great. That sounds real good. In wow. fact, it's been shown in many studies that different fragrances such as uh, pine, cedar, and fir actually um, have medicinal properties that promote oh. healing. Wow. So. So maybe I better take a walk outside in the, the woods. forest. That's and... right. Yes, yeah, several studies have shown that pine cone extracts have actually been shown to suppress the growth of the influenza virus in the cells. Oh. Well, and um, some great. people actually use pine as an essence oil. Citrus has also been shown to inhibit the influenza A virus. Citrus oh. oils um, are often recommended to reduce viruses in the air. So I guess I better get some lemons and start squeezing the skins around, huh? That's <laughs> one way to do it. <laughs> Just as fresh air and pine and citrus are good for you, there are certain components that you can find in air that are bad for you. Studies have shown that to high levels of ozone or a sulfur dioxide, the component in acid rain, mm -hmm. are actually very harmful. And people who live in these areas have more pneumonia and more influenza. Uh, there's also studies that show that people who had their offices remodeled, new carpet, new plastic sheeting on the wall, new desk, new chairs, that there was a increased amount of formaldehyde, phenol, organic hydrocarbons in the air, and the people's immune system suffered. The natural killer cell activity was reduced. Mm. And so maybe you don't want to remodel your office right before the bird flu season. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about mold? You hear a lot about mold. People who live in houses that have had mold have a higher incidence of respiratory infections and symptoms. We also talked about sunlight as one of our eight natural remedies or eight natural doctors. And sunlight is very important. That's right. This is a particularly bright point. <laughs> <laughs> they did a study on people where they exposed them to sunlight for an hour a day mm -hmm. for 12 days. Yep. And then they checked their immune system. And it significantly increased their circulating immune cells for up to two weeks after the experiment. Which is very good. Oh, We're fighting yeah. off everything and keeping your immune system boosted. Yeah, cancer, you know. It also is found to trigger vitamin D production. And they found that children who um, have a deficiency are actually predisposed to respiratory infections. Wow. And they also find that vitamin D prevents excessive inflammation or the cytokine storms, the inflammation coming into the uh, area. And also it stimulates the natural killer cells lining the respiratory tract. We talked about the natural killer cells and the interferon being the big first fight, first, first line wall. of defense. Uh, They've even come to the conclusion that it's not the cold of winter that predisposes people to a seasonal, mm. you know, cold season or, or flu season, but it's actually the deficiency of vitamin D from being indoors all the time. True. Tell us a little bit about the interferon. Yeah, you know, there's a problem with the flu. The flu attacks the immune system and it makes it so that the immune system does not produce as much interferon. When the flu is gone, the immune system is still shut down. Mm. And then the bacteria can come in and give you bacterial pneumonia. When you go out in the sunlight, it suppresses the virus's ability to knock out interferon. Mm. And so the stimulation to the immune system by the sunlight is very important. Do you have any suggestions about the amount of sunlight or any uh guidelines for the amount of skin that needs to be exposed or anything like that? The suggestion is that you should be out in the sun for 20 minutes 
three days out of the week with at least 25% of your skin exposed to the sun. Mm. You know, you can decide which 25% you want, but uh, <laughs> yeah, be discreet. Be uh, the other thing is, is that sun has ultraviolet light in it. And ultraviolet light kills microbes. In this mm -hmm. case, it'll kill the influenza virus. It's the UV light that does that. Sometimes in the hospital, we'll put up UV lights just to kill more bugs. Well, we talked about pure air and sunlight. Our next thing is temperance. Temperance means moderation or avoiding things that aren't good for you. The whole idea here is to avoid those things which are bad, those things that are good to use in moderation mm. because we can overdo it on good stuff too. That's right. And I think, you know, when you think about the bird flu and you think about your lungs, the first thing you think about is people who are using their lungs for something other than just air, mm -hmm. <laughs> like perhaps tobacco smoke. Yes. The studies have shown that uh, smokers are, are one and a half times more likely to catch the flu. Mm. And what's more, on the yearly flus, if a smoker gets the flu, they'll be 70% more likely to take off work as a result mm. of the flu. So I wouldn't be smoking. Well, smoking tends to be associated with alcohol often. I'm sure oh, alcohol is bad yeah. for your immune system. Yes, and the alcohol poisons the little killer cells, mm. and uh, people who <laughs> drink a lot of alcohol definitely have suppressed immune systems. What's also interesting is together the two are multiplicative in their effect. The two together really knock out the immune system more than either Just one by themselves would. Yeah. What else can we be excessive in that can bother our immune systems? You know, we all have to eat. Mm. People who eat less have more active natural killer cells. Interesting. And this is especially important as people get older because as you get older, your immune system tends to decline. But people who are on caloric restriction can attenuate that decline over a long period of time. Well, another natural remedy that we've talked about is proper rest. They found that people who sleep well have significantly better immune systems than people who have insomnia. Must be your immune system likes to sleep too. Yeah, good rest for the whole body. <laughs> <laughs> they found actually in a study with mice uh -huh. that uh, sleep is beneficial. They took some mice and they vaccinated them. Mm -hmm. And then they put them in two groups. One group they sleep deprived and the other group they let them sleep. Okay. And then they gave them both influenza viruses. Well, the group that were sleep deprived caught the flu as though they'd never been immunized mm. compared to the other group. So you could do everything, you know, right as far as getting your usual immunizations and so forth, but if you don't get your sleep, it really does you no good. Mm. I That's heard meditation is really good as well as a form of building your immune system. Yes, meditation does improve the immune system according to a study in 2003. Now you told me there was a study that was done down in Georgia about taking a day out of the week to rest. People thought maybe that helps reduce stress. Definitely. Taking a day off, you don't have to worry about anything. That's right. You know, Seventh-day Adventists have been studied a lot because they live longer, they have fewer diseases. This was a study out of Georgia where they were checking their immune systems. Mm. They found that Seventh-day Adventists had higher levels of immune stimulating antioxidants. Those who are vegetarian even had better antioxidant levels. 